So that's part of the progress that we hope to make, is being able to risk stratify patients and apply different treatments. And that's a big problem for how, why we think trials have not succeeded in the past. I think, you know, at Mass General, we talk about acute graft versus host disease a lot. Uh, it, it impacts us because it's a rather early complication. And any time we have a patient who unfortunately dies of its complications, it, it truly hits home uh, because we view, uh, it, it hits home to the entire care team, uh, especially because how early it is and, and how much time they spend with us in and outside of the hospital. As part of our quality operations in our transplant program, we do analyze the incidence of acute graft versus host disease to understand what we're seeing and we compare it to what is being published. Having just reviewed our data over the last uh, two years, uh, we can say that the incidence of grades two through four acute GVH, which is uh, the, the grades that we truly mostly care about um, because they have been shown to affect patient outcomes, but grades two through four acute GVH happen in about 25 to 30% of our transplant patients. Severe graft versus host disease is regarded as grades three or four clinically, and that happens only in about five to 10% of our patients, thankfully. Yet for those five to 10%, so much progress uh, remains. Um, when we look at graft versus host disease, not every patient has the same risk. Uh, Zach, could you review some of the risk factors we think about when we uh, think about a patient and their risk for developing acute GVH? There are a number of established clinical risk factors for acute graft versus host disease that we have to think about when a patient is preparing for transplant. One of the most important factors is the degree of HLA disparity between the donor and the recipient. So patients that are going to receive a transplant from a donor that is mismatched at HLA markers are more likely to develop graft versus host disease as compared to a donor who has a full match. Another donor-related factor to consider is the disparity of the gender between the donor and the recipient. As previous studies have shown that if a male patient receives cells from a female patient, that there is a slightly increased risk for graft versus host disease as compared to other combinations of gender between the donor and the recipient. Another important transplant factor is the conditioning intensity, conditioning regimen and intensity, which refers to the chemo and or radiation that a patient may receive prior to the infusion of the cells. Uh, it has been shown that patients who get higher doses of total body irradiation, or TBI, have an increased risk for graft versus host disease. And also, the GVHD prophylaxis regimen that they receive also contributes to their GVHD risk. Now, we talked about a number of these factors, and it's always an overarching goal that when we create a plan for a patient to try to minimize the risk for acute graft versus host disease. But at the same time, we have to remember that there are other patient and disease related factors that help influence our choice when it comes to these decisions.